What's going on, guys? Welcome to another RNG Recruit interview. This time with us, we have got a very, very high upside special 2025 wide receiver slash cornerback from Mainland High School in Florida. I'll tell you guys right now, man, uh, Miami is showing interest. Coach Beard is definitely interested. If you guys watch his film, you'll see exactly why. The God-given ability and his ability to use those traits already are one of the big reasons why. He's wanted so much at the University of Miami. I'm excited to bring him on right now to have him introduce himself to you. Hi, my name is Tyree Wearspoon, class of 25, where I see from Miller High School out of Daytona Beach. Hey, Tyree, man, thanks for jumping on here and taking some time to let fans get more familiar with you. Well, thank you for inviting me onto the stream, man. I appreciate it. No problem, man. No problem. I'm excited to have you on here after watching your film, man, and knowing that you were at Miami, man. I mean, it just... I was excited to see you were at Miami, honestly. Thank you. So I always like to start off with, uh, what's your current height and weight? Um, six, five and a quarter. I'm pretty sure. I think I weigh 186. Okay. 186, Have 185, around there. Okay. Have you had your uh, wingspan measured or, or arm length measured? Yeah, I did, but I keep, I keep on forgetting, like, the exact measurements. Next time that I get it done, I'll remember. Okay. All I know is, is you got a lot of length and you know how to use it. That's what I can see. I and mean, I see it on your film, bro. I mean, that the, your arms just like, it's like go, go gadget arms, bro. It's just like never ends. <laughs> do you, uh, do you do any other sports besides football? Yeah. Um, I play basketball and I run track. Okay. Okay. What, what, uh, meets do you perform in track? 100, 200, 400, long jump. Um, this year I'm going to try the high jump. Okay. How long have you been doing the uh, 100 and 200? Um, I started my freshman year and I did a little bit my sophomore year before I stopped and was focusing more on spring ball. Have you noticed, you know, ha that it's helped you on the field, that extra speed at track and stuff? Has that actually, you know, made its way onto the football field for oh, you? It does. I remember my freshman year when I first started, I was like, all right, well, this is different. And then we got the spring ball, and I realized, like, I got faster. So if you had to say, like, you know, right now what your current strengths are, what do you feel you're best at on the field? Um, I would say using my height and my length to advantage against corners a lot. Um, on short routes, boxing them out because I'm tall and I'm lengthy, so the ball is right in front of me, I'll catch the ball, and they can get to it. This off season, before you know, you took your your first snap this this sneeze, uh, season that we have right now. What was your main focus? You know, as far as improving with technique, where did you want to take your game to the next level? Um, more in my releases and my routes. I want to yeah. get better with my releases because um, mostly as a tall receiver, they think that you're slow, but I'm more on the fast end. So yeah. I want to like move my feet more so I can get more of advantage off press and stuff. And in my routes, I want to get more open on the field. And is that something you're noticing as well that's uh, happening for you this season on the field too? Yes, yes, it is. That's great, man. That's great. It's always nice when the hard work actually shows up. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So in your opinion, and, I, and I'm not saying that you are an elite. This is, I always like to make a, the definition clear on it, you know. But what do you feel it takes to make an elite wide receiver? Mentally and physically, what traits do those receivers need to have? I think good feet, good routes, good hands, um, and mentally just knowing your assignment. Because yes. in my opinion, I think being a wide receiver is more of a mental thing than it really is. Um, yeah. Because let's say that you drop the ball once and then you're in your head the whole game and you keep on making mistakes. Instead of like, if you drop the ball, then forget about it, move on to the next play and make a big play for your team. I'm really glad you brought up the mental aspect of it because that's not talked about as much. You know, it's just a lot of it's just physicalness, you know, length, physical, speed, all that stuff. The mental part of it's huge. It really is. It really is. I'm glad that you've identified that part of it and you know how to, you know, kind of break it down. If it does start happening to you on the field, you can actually see it and then, you know, identify it and, and take care of it. That's important. What was your weight room focus this off season? You know, where did you want to add a little muscle? Um, upper body on my arms more, which mm -hmm. I did see improvement after some workouts, which is long, 
Lots of workouts, yeah. very hard. Um, we take some workouts very seriously on improving more and getting stronger. How long have you been over at Mainland High School? Um, I transferred February of 2023. And then okay. so now. So half, okay. I would say like halfway through my sophomore year and then that to the beginning of, of my junior year. Okay. Okay. Who are some of your favorite players? You know, guys you can look up to in college or NFL, either or, doesn't matter. And why do you look up to them? You know, what what makes you such a fan of them? Um, college, I'll say my two favorite wide receivers right now are Marvin Harrison Jr. and Keon Coleman. Yeah. Oh, and Colby Young. Yeah. Like both, like the same height and they're used the exact same way. Um, in NFL, I would say our all-time favorite wide receiver, Calvin Johnson, because he he's a beast. Um, and then currently, Justin Jefferson. Okay. Well, another beast right there, man. I mean, nobody can stop Justin Jefferson, it seems like. Yeah. Tyree, if you had to describe your game to somebody who's never seen your film or never seen you play, how would you describe your game to them? That's a great question. Um, I would say think about just tall, lengthy, but with speed and can get to the ball. I would add in a lot of heart, too. I noticed you play with a lot of heart and a lot of emotion out there for sure. Yes, sir. So what gets you pumped up on game day, bro? Like, what really gets you excited? Is it, you know, stuff pre-game, getting in the zone, or is it something that happens on the field, you know, a touchdown or anything like that? What gets Tyree really excited on game day? I think just being on the field with my teammates and our band. Our band is amazing. Like, at the games, you hear the band, and it's just that vibe that you feel that it's game day, it's a Friday, let's get to work, Um, warming up with the quarterbacks and our wide receiver coach. Like, it's a great feeling. What's the vibe like on a home game, you know, on a Friday night for your for, for mainland high school? What's it like? Uh, that is – it's crazy. I would say it's crazy. Like, I mean, our crowd and and people who support our school, they are all involved. Um, I think everyone in Lucifer County around Daytona Beach is really involved with mainland high school. That's great to hear, man. I love hearing that the local community is involved. I love hearing that. So how's recruiting going for you, man? You know, it seems like things are kind of starting to pick up a little more lately and stuff mm-hmm. for you. Are you are you enjoying it so far? Oh, I am. I, I'm enjoying it. I've been enjoying going to college games, especially at Miami and Florida. Recently, that Miami game was insane. Oh, my gosh. Like, the crowd was crazy. The energy was amazing. Yeah, I was going to I wanted to ask you like, you know, what did you really get to experience at the game? I know you got to uh, kick it with coach Beard for a little bit and stuff. Uh, yeah. you know, just kind of tell me what, what what were the experiences like that you went through there? Um, first got there and we got to the lounge, we got to eat food and stuff. Um, I talked to coach Brown, who's helped me out a lot with um yeah. talking to coach Beard and getting involved with Miami. Um, then went down to the field, watched the team warm up. That was pretty fun to see how they work, um, the receiver and stuff, and the quarterbacks. Then we got to our seats. The game started. It was a very intense game. I feel like both Clemson and Miami were going back and forth the whole time. And then when we got into overtime, it was it was crazy. The crowd was going crazy. And then on that final drive, when we stopped them, it was a great feeling that that Miami won. Dude, that game had me, you know, like me being a Miami fan, dude, that game had my heart just pounding, bro. I was like, no, no, yes, yes, no, yes, no. It was like back and forth the whole time, dude. I'm glad you got a chance to experience a game like that, though, where you got to really see Mm -hmm. the emotions from the fans, you know, like the true emotions, you know. It really came out in a game like that, you know what I'm saying? So when you first started getting in touch with Miami and they first started getting interest, interested in you, were you surprised that they wanted to give you an offer and extend that to you and, and you know, kind of bring you in to have you, you know, at games and all that kind of stuff? It was, that a, surprise. was a very big moment for me when I got the phone call from Coach Beard. 
I remember like it. I remember like it was yesterday. The feeling was just so unreal. Like when I was on the phone after the call was done, my hands were like shaking a little bit. I was a little bit antsy, you know. I got to tell my coach and my teammates. So it was a good feeling. And I love to hear that you were that excited about the call, man. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. So how how long after the phone call, that initial phone call I made with you, was it until you actually got a chance to come see a game? Um, I got the phone call, I think, mid-August. Okay. And then my schedule was, like, busy for a little bit with football yeah. and stuff and um, recruiting-wise. And then when I got to finally go see my play, it was just – it was good overall that I finally got to see Coach Beard and stuff because we were in contact before we were texting and stuff. He was checking up on me, um, letting me know how things are at the university and how practice was. And then just seeing him in person, he's a great guy. Like, overall, a man with, with wisdom and words that, like, a young man like me needs. Great to hear. Great to hear that, man. I, I, I always hear nothing but great things about Coach Beard on and off the field. So what other uh, schools have been really showing you a lot of love? I know Miami has been, but what other mm -hmm. schools have been really starting to show you a lot of love lately? Um, Florida's one, Toledo, Ole Miss, Coastal, um, Maryland, Tulane, USF, um, Virginia Tech, and there's more. I can't get them off the top of my head. Man, uh, recruiting is really picking up for you, huh? I mean, it's it's lately. It seems like it's like really, really started to pick up. Like these last, especially a uh, couple months. Mm -hmm. So, Coach Cristobal, you know, and this this is down the road and stuff. You know, when it comes time for you to to pick a college, but I'm just kind of curious of your opinion on this. Coach Cristobal a while back said he wants young players to come into Miami. And he wants them to get into practice and earn snaps and get on the field early. He wants them to earn those snaps. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go to a school where you have the chance to play early so you can earn yes. that role? I do. That's an important factor for you? It is. Okay. So what are some of the other important factors for you when it comes time to look for a college? Um, I'll say mainly towards the majors that I want to choose. I want to do um, sports med and psychology. Mm -hmm. um, I would say more on top of like how they're going to help me in the classroom and stuff with study hall in case I need it, um, stuff like that. More towards my my academics, really. I I take pride in my in my academics. I uh, mean, I love to hear that, and you know, my University of Miami loves to hear that as well. Man, they're an academic driven school for sure. So what's next for you and your high school football team? Right now, we are preparing to play Lake Mary this Friday. Big game. It is a very big game. I'm confident yeah. that we're going to win. Is this, is this your guys' last week of the season? Last week of the regular season, yes, before we start playoffs. So your last week of the season, you got to play Lake Mary, huh? Man. Uh, and now they just came off of a loss to Seminole, right? It was like a like a one or two point game or something like that. Twenty nine, twenty eight was the score. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a real close one. Yeah, it was a battle. Yeah, that'll be an exciting one, man. That's that's definitely an exciting game to watch right there. So at this point in the in the uh, interview, what I like to do is I like to give recruits a chance to kind of show some love to people who've helped them out along the way. You know what I'm saying? Like trainers, parents, coaches, you know, whoever you want to show some love to, feel free to show them some love. Um, I'll say first, my mom. Uh, mom has really helped me a lot with the recruiting process. You know, she's been on me since the beginning of my sophomore year to get in touch with coaching stuff and start to send out film. And then junior year, it got serious and I wouldn't be here without her. Like she has helped me this whole time and I'm thankful for her every single day. And my coaches, Coach Roland, Coach Day, actually the whole coaching staff, they're all amazing. Um, coach Roland is a great coach. Why I mean, like when it comes to him and he takes care of his players to make sure that we are good. Amazing guy. Coach Jay and Coach AJ are my wide receiver coaches, and they are great. When it comes to, like, working on the little things with routes, 
our full work, they are on top of us and they want us to be perfect. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and plug your social media accounts. Let people know where they can find you online. Uh, uh, my Instagram is Tyree.0 with T Y R R E E dot zero. Um, and my Twitter is Tyree Weather SP1. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, Tyree, man, I got one last question for you here, and I'll let you get on with your night. It's a question I ask everybody I bring on the show, you know, uh, coaches, players, ADs. It, it don't matter who it is. They all get the same last question. Why do you love the game of football? What makes you want to go out there and perform at a high level on a weekly basis? I think that um, football, it was it came natural a little bit to me mm -hmm. when I was younger. I think like it's provided a lot for me and more opportunities for myself to do better in life. So overall, it's it, it's just been a, an advantage for you on yeah. and off the field. Yes, sir. I like hearing that, man. I like hearing that a lot. Well, man, that's all I got for you tonight to, for for the first first interview that we're gonna do here, Tyree. But I mean, I definitely want to have you back on in the future so we can update fans about your recruitment, your development, you know, all that good stuff. Because mm -hmm. I have no doubt in my mind, Miami's gonna be sticking with you here for a while, man. I'm I'm kind of excited to see where it goes, you know. Yes, sir. Well, man, thank you again for taking the time to join us for another uh, to join us for an interview. Best of luck versus Lake Mary coming up this week, man. Thanks. I know you guys got a battle there. Go out there, dude. Kick some butt, bro. Kick Thanks. some butt. I'll be rooting for you guys. No doubt about it, man. You have yes, yourself sir. a good night, Tyree. We'll speak soon. You too. All right, guys. That is one of the up-and-coming 2025 wide receivers in the 20, or 2025 class. But he also plays cornerback, which is interesting as well. It gives him that. Nice little mix where when you're playing wide receiver and cornerback, you get to look at it from both sides of the ball. You get to learn, learn a lot of ball skills playing at the cornerback position as well. I love that he gets to experience both sides of that, and I think his future is at wide receiver, but I'm glad that he does get a little bit of that cornerback experience as well just because, I mean, it, it can honestly only help him. It can, ball tracking skills are, a, are an amazing thing to have. And to learn them from the cornerback position is completely different than learning it from the wide receiver position. And it's a lot harder. But if you can figure out how to do it, it just helps you out as a wide receiver. So thank you guys for joining us for another RNG Recruit interview. We'll be back soon with another one. Have a great night, guys.